Hey y'all, we are taking the Lowland Kids Snap Sleeper, but we're gonna do a zipper hack. I'm gonna teach you how to throw a zipper in instead of using snaps. So let's get started by pulling out the pattern pieces to show you what differences I did in cutting it out. So it's pretty simple. I'm only taking the two front pieces. On one of them, I'm cutting out the binding version. The other one, I'm cutting out the foldover version. I chose to use the left side for the foldover. That's where I'm going to be making a little flap for my zipper. If you don't want to do the flap, then don't cut out the extra. Just cut them both at the uh, binding version. Uh, we will not be binding, but that's the side that you'll want to cut out. Um, so these are the pattern pieces. We have back pieces, um, sleeves, cuffs, and then the two front pieces. So let's just get started with assembly. So the first thing you're gonna do is um, the shoulder seams. We're gonna place uh, the, the front and back pieces right sides together and sew along the shoulder seam. I'm gonna be using my serger. If you don't have a serger, just use your favorite stretch stitch, um, like a zigzag or lightning stitch, whatever you prefer. Okay, so once that is done, uh, next it's time to apply the neck band. I chose to do a band and not any binding. I don't know how binding would work with a zipper. I don't think it's possible, but if someone can figure it out, go for it. So I'm gonna take my neck band and I just found the center point of the back and the center point of the binding. Um, and I'm just gonna match those up. And the way this binding works is kind of unique, or this this band, I guess, um, is the, the ends taper and it just creates a nice little look. Um, however, if you do have that fold over version, then you need to have the neck band end three fourths of an inch in. So I was kind of measuring it um, I sort of eyeballed it to be honest, but you can get your measuring tool out to double check it and then just stick a pin so that you know where that needs to end and you're just gonna attach it right along the line there. Um, this really isn't too different from like just sewing something on normally. Um, it just kind of tapers off at the end. And then the other one, I sewed it all the way to the end, but I actually wished I would have brought it in about a quarter of an inch because the zipper does fold over the band a little bit. So just be aware, learn from my mistake, maybe bring it in a quarter of an inch. Okay, so here's what's looking like so, so far with one side being a little bit wider than the other side um, with the band on. Okay, so whether you're doing the snaps version or the, this zipper hack, I highly recommend using stabilizer, um, especially since a zipper is not stretchy and you're working with stretchy fabric. If you don't use a stabilizer, your fabric will stretch out as you're put, applying the zipper and it's really hard to get your zipper to match up. So um, I use an iron-on, I'll link my kind below, I just get it from Amazon, um, but there's lots of different kinds out there. So now it's time to apply the zipper. So I start by laying my zipper down, facing up with my fabric all right sides up so I can see how it's supposed to lay. And then I'm just gonna lay it over top of one side so that they're right sides together and the edges that are lined up together are the ones that you're gonna sew on so then I, now i'm going to just attach that zipper um i start by having it all the way zipped up so that i make sure that nothing gets twisted or that i'm putting the correct side on which side of the garment and then after i get my pin in i just kind of unzip it because it's um, easier for me to work with with it unzipped so now I'm just gonna pin that zipper in place. Um, I am gonna be folding down that top edge, so I was kind of trying to decide where I wanted it to land. Um, I was using the, that top metal piece as a marker for me because wherever that's at is the highest your zipper will go to. So I didn't want my zipper to leave like a big gap at the top, so I wanted to make sure I scooted up high enough. And you'll need to kind of mark where that is when we do the other side, but you'll see that when we get to it. So just pin it in place, and then we're gonna go take that to the sewing machine. So um, when you are using a zipper, you need to switch your presser foot to a zipper foot. So identify what that looks like to you. It's um, on your machine, it's usually skinny. The purpose for that is so that it can get really close to the teeth of the zipper, which is the part that um, closes up. Um, and what's really cool is that, or I, okay, what I do wanna say as well is you need to move your needle over um, so that it's as far 
either left or right as it can be. So in this case, mine is as far left as possible so that it is as close to the teeth as it possibly can be um, because I don't want very much of my zipper to show. Um, so anyways, now as you go, just try to keep it all as even as possible. Um, my fabric still stretched just a little bit, even with my stabilizer, but it wasn't too bad. Um, the important thing is that as I go and do the other side, I need to make sure that if it's going to stretch at all, it needs to stretch the same amount so that they match up. So keep that in mind. So I'm closing this back up again. So once again, nothing gets twisted or whatever in the wrong direction. And then I'm just folding it over again. So it's right sides together. Okay, first I guess what I did is I was folding down my fabric so I could eyeball and make sure that I line up the, the top metal piece the same on both sides. Because um, you want to make sure that matches up so it's not off and looking funny. So once I found that place, then I'm going to just kind of open up um, the zipper again and line it up and pin it on place. So the other thing with the second side that's important is to kind of check to make sure that the bottom portion will end at the same point. Um, so stick a pin um, in the middle and, and at the ends as needed to make sure that everything's going to line up, especially if it stretches a little bit as you go. Um, and I didn't seem to film this side, but you'll want to make sure that you move your needle to the opposite side of wherever you did it on the first time around. Okay, so once the zipper is applied, um, if you are not doing any type of fold over flap, then you are good to go. You can move on to the next step. You can kind of fast forward a little bit. However, if you are going to do the little um, flap to cover up the zipper a little bit, then this is the next step to do. Um, so yeah, I just zipped it up to check how everything looks. It's looking pretty good. So honestly, I didn't hate how the zipper looked in this one. I wouldn't have minded left leaving it open, but I did want to show you how to do the kind of flap version. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it, like to hide the zipper. Um, so anyways, that's a great look. And what you would do to finish it off to give a more polished look is actually top stitch right along either side. Um, so you are welcome to do that um, as a great finishing look if that's something that you like. Um, I didn't end up doing it because I just did the cover-up version. It's not necessary, but it does look good. Um, oh, and before we do the fold over, we are going to finish and sew the, I'm going to top stitch the collar. I waited to do this and I didn't do it earlier because I wanted to make sure I was including this little flap at the top of the zipper. Um, so we're going to do that next because then when we do the fold over part, it's already sewn down and good to go. So next, sew around, top stitch it. I just did this on my sewing machine. On to the little zipper cover fold over thing. <laughs> so it's very, very simple. All you do is take the, the side that has the zipper that is a little bit wider. For mine, it's the left side and I'm going to fold it over three fourths of an inch. I'm placing a bunch of pins to get it all in place and then I will be top stitching um, about, I want to say I did it about three fourths of an inch um, seam allowance. I can't remember, but I, I'd use my zipper foot once again. Um, to be able to top stitch it in place right along the edge there so that I was as close to the zipper as possible once again. And um, the one thing that I will say about all this is it is a blind sew, so it can feel a little bit tricky for that reason. Um, but yeah, I can't give you the exact seam allowance because I don't remember. I, like I can't see what it is right there. But um, basically you just want to be able to sew it right along the zipper line for whatever amount you fold it over. <laughs> Sorry, it's not more specific, um, but I'm sure once you're at the machine, you'll be able to feel where it needs to be. And um, I did lengthen, whenever I do a top stitch, I usually lengthen my stitch to at least like a three, maybe three and a half. Um, and I just feel like it looks a little better that way. So um, the other thing that you'll see that I'm doing is I keep trying to pull my fabric over to the side to make sure that it doesn't um, like get caught and and pull over 
one thing that you will see is that it looks a little bit rippled. Um, I don't know if it's something that I'm doing wrong, if it's my fabric, if I didn't cut it on the grain, or if it's just because this pattern wasn't necessarily designed to do this. So um, be aware this isn't the most polished finishing. I did go and iron it later and that did look better, um, but it is just kind of uh, pulling a little bit funny as you can see. So it does cover up the zipper and that's great. Um, but I don't have a solution at the moment for not ma making it kind of ripple a little bit funny. So you can decide if that's going to bother you. Maybe don't do the fold over version. You can still just do a zipper and make sure it matches. It'll look great. Or it can be a pop of color and make it really fun. Okay. So next we're going to apply the sleeves. And so I'm just finding the center of each sleeve by folding it in half. And then I'm going to match that up with the, uh, top seam, the shoulder seam, and then place the sleeves on right side together with the body piece and we're just going to sew those sleeves in so you can also match up the ends if that helps and then go ahead and serge them on And then while I am over there on the serger, I will also be sewing these cuffs together. Um, you just need to take them, fold them in half right sides together and sew along the edge. Um, but if you've seen any of my recent videos, I have learned a trick that I really like and I actually fold it in half again and sew along that same raw edge and it just kind of um it because later you're gonna have to fold it in half again and so it just does that portion for you and i like it a lot so when i take this to the serger i prefer to start with the folded edge not the raw edge um i don't know why i just feel like it does better so sometimes if i do the raw edge side i remember now it slips and sometimes it tucks under too much so that's why Okay, so once the sleeves are attached, now it's time to do the side seams. So just match them up, make sure that the um, two seams there are matched up nicely, and then we're also gonna do that um, inseam portion. And voila, it is done, look at that. That was really quick. <laughs> um, before we are going to apply our cuffs, you can trim um, this zipper, but before doing that, stitch in place a new stopper. This is the greatest thing about zippers that I have come to enjoy is that I just buy them as big, like as long as I can find them, and then cut them short. They're basically the same price if you get short ones or long ones. So you can just sew your own stopper into place, or sometimes they can slide up and then trim the excess. And surprisingly, this did really well in my serger. I was kind of worried about it, but I did a test run <laughs> very slowly and it wasn't a problem. Um, so anyways, turn all of your cuffs right side out and then I'll be folding them in half to stick a pin on the opposite side so that I can match up the ends, um, like the two separate ends with the two seams in the bottom cuffs and in the top, um, I'll probably fold the other in half and find the center of that as well. If you are doing the mittens version, um, then I will link a video below for where I have shown that example before. Um, and I was looking everywhere for an example of the footies version because I thought there was one out there and I didn't find one. So I apologize. Um, I did not film the footies version. Um, but if that is something you would really like to see, then be sure to vote for that in the Facebook group, the Lowland Kids Sew Along group. Um, vote for the cozy footies pattern and we can do that one for you. So if there's enough interest, we will do it. Um, so anyway, here I am just matching up the ends and then replacing, um, just meeting it up with a pin there. I like to get all of my pins in place for all four cuffs before I go take it to the machine. So cuffs with baby clothes are like such a beast. And the main advice that I have for you is just go slow and be very mindful that you are not getting extra, any extra layers you're not supposed to get, but also make sure that all of the layers that you are supposed to be getting are getting into the circle. Um, if you notice that you have a hard time taking it straight to the serger, then just go ahead and do a base stitch first. Um, 
take it easy. Also, sometimes clips can be more useful than pins because they don't like get in your way as much when you're sewing. So anyway, do whatever you prefer. And then once it's done, turn everything right side out and look how cute. So I did not do a little fold over snap, but um, if you want to just kind of like draft your own, it's pretty simple. You can sew and attach that on as well. Um, I liked the way the cover looked enough. I thought it was pretty nice. Um, so anyways, there's that zipper hack. It was so simple. Um, I really hope that you can see that zippers aren't scary. They don't have to be hard. But if you do have any other questions about them, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Here's a little up close pic of that zipper. I hope you learned something new and I hope you have a wonderful day. Go have fun sewing today. <laughs> If you'd like to see more content from me, you can check me out on Instagram at come create with Kim. I am also trying to do more TikTok videos that are just short and sweet. My username there is Kim M. McLeod. I'll link it below. <laughs>